This video explains how to add values to a heat map in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example, and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to five of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And we can print the first six rows of this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running the head function, as you can see in line six of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that our data contains two group indicators, group one and group two, and a column containing our values. Now, if we want to draw these data, we have different alternatives. However, in this video, I want to show you how to draw a heat map using the ggplot2 package. And for that reason, we first need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines eight and nine of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line nine. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geomtile. So if you run lines 11 and 12 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 13 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a ggplot2 heat map showing our data. However, you can also see that at this point, no values have been added to the different cells of our heat map. So if we want to add text labels to the cells of our heat map, then we can apply the geom text function as you can see in line 16 of the code. So first we need to specify the name of our plot object, which is called ggp. And then we are adding to this the geom text function. And within the function, we need to specify the aesthetics. And within the aesthetics, we need to specify the labels argument to be equal to the name of our values column. So if you run lines 15 and 16 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated. And as you can see, our updated plot contains values in each cell of the heat map. You might also see that at this point, the values are difficult to read because the values are written in black and the colors of our heat map are relatively dark. So for that reason, we might want to change the colors of our heat map and we can do that as you can see in lines 18 to 20 of the code. So in lines 18 and 19, I'm using exactly the same code as in lines 15 and 16. However, this time I'm also adding the scale fill gradient function. And within this function, I'm specifying the color range of our heat map. So I want to start our color range at the color white. And for the highest color, I'm specifying this hex color code. So if you run lines 18 to 20 of the code, you can see that our heat map is updated once again. And this time we can read the values in the heat map cells much better. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.